Hey guys, so I recently bought this bad boy, the GoPro Hero 7 Black. And I wanted to explain you why I think this is the best GoPro for dirt bike riding for the average user like myself. So stay tuned to find out why. Until now I've been using the modest GoPro Hero 3 Silver and it has delivered so far. It has been super reliable over the years and despite the endless beating it never skipped a beat. However, modern cameras come equipped with something that is a complete game changer for dirt bike riding, image stabilization. The GoPro Hero 8 Black is GoPro's latest camera, which has taken every capability of the 7 a step further and how could you not think about buying it after watching their launch videos? And for a brief moment, I really thought the GoPro Hero 8 Black was the perfect camera for what I do. It's the latest one, so it has to be the best one, right? Not exactly. I won't dwell on the camera's ridiculous specs for two reasons. First, you already have tons of videos spitting out the amazing specs of both cameras, so I won't read what's on GoPro's website. Secondly, I'm giving you the perspective of the average user that likes to record races and some rides with the buddies, so it makes no sense talking about the ridiculous specs that none of us will ever use, and most likely can't even use because we are not professional videographers. If you compare the versatility of both cameras, you realize that the 8 is just a 7 on steroids. Whatever you want to do with the 8, you can do with a 7. Both have a great image stabilization, probably the best one in the market. The 7 has the, pretty much the same image stabilization as the 8, but the 8 can stabilize it even more with the HyperSmooth 2.0 set on high, and you can give the steroid shots using the boost mode. Both cameras can record at 1080p and 720p with HyperSmooth mode, and that's more than enough for the average rider for two reasons. If you try to record with more than 1080p, you'll have to buy tons of micro SD cards just to store the footage, which isn't practical at all, considering that you might already have to change batteries just to record a long ride or a race. If you are doing any kind of video editing with 2.7 or 4K footage, you better have a damn good laptop or setup that can process that footage without crashing or taking 12 hours to render a video. And I don't see the point of having to invest so much money just to share some videos on YouTube, which are usually seen on a smartphone. To be honest, most people won't even tell the difference. Both have voice control and wake on voice, which can be super useful if you have the camera on a helmet, for example, which allows you to turn on the camera and start recording through voice commands. GoPro, start recording. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, turn on. GoPro, start recording. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, turn off. Both have a great touchscreen, super easy to use, but the 8 makes it really simple to change between modes. Unfortunately, none of them works with gloves on. The 7 and the 8 have 8 times slow mo and GPS tracking, so if you want to revival your buddy's hilarious slow mo crash, you can do it with both cameras. These were the common aspects between the cameras, but now I'm getting into the deal breakers. And to be honest, since the 7 doesn't drag behind the 8 in terms of capabilities for what I, an average rider, need, only a few things made me choose a 7. The GoPro 7 is attached to the accessories via mounting frame, which is included with the camera, and is as sturdy as it gets. It's a well-refined concept that GoPro nailed long ago. The GoPro 8, however, has the folding fingers collapsible into the camera, which for action sports isn't necessarily a step forward, in my opinion. If you mount it on your helmet or anywhere else, you can clearly see that there's a clearance on them, which allows the camera to jiggle all over the place. It doesn't matter how well designed these folding fingers are, this clearance will eventually make the hinges snap from fatigue, especially if you use it on really rugged terrain, such as the ones I use for. Another thing I have to consider when buying a camera for off-road is how well prepared it is to get in contact with the elements. The good thing about previous GoPro models was that they were completely airtight inside a casing if you wanted to. 
From the moment you only have a frame or even just the folding fingers, the camera has to be prepared to get under mud, dust or anything else you throw at it and still maintain its reliability. And the 8 doesn't seem to be made for that. I can see dust getting into the huge mic entries, the folding fingers hinges and the battery door which might compromise the water tightness of the camera if the dust damages the rubber seal. The 7 also has mic entries, although smaller, but the mounting frame covers all of them except one, and the battery door design is way more element proof compared to the 8. One of the most important aspects of the GoPro 8 that made me choose the 7 is the lens, or actually the lack of replaceable lens for that matter. The GoPro 8 has a super slick design, I'll give it that, and they claim that the lens's glass is twice as strong as in the 7. But no matter how tough it is, it simply won't withstand rocks being spit out from the guy riding in front of you at 90 km per hour. It simply won't. It doesn't make much sense GoPro removing this feature if it's also made for rugged action sports. What happens if it breaks? Is it as cheap as a 20 euro replacement like in a 7? Nope. I think GoPro wanted the Hero 8 Black to steer in a different direction than the 7, more into the vlogging market. The fixed lenses and the folding fingers make it way sleeker and easier to store, even in your pocket. And the upcoming media mods stamp it as the go-to camera for action sports and vlogging. If you're thinking about buying a GoPro for Enduro or Morocross, I would say buy a 7 and save some money. Or buy some extra batteries or accessories with a spare cash, you'll get far more from the same amount of money. At least that's what I did. I hope I shed some light on this topic and subscribe for more dirt bike related videos. If you have any questions, leave on the comments below and don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for watching.